War raged in the south, and the rangers of the north were absent. Brigands and ruffians took an opportunity to wrest control of Bree. Welcome back, everyone. This is Pineleaf Needles for Pineleaf Plays the Bjorning. As you can see, I'm playing Thievery and Mischief rather than Siege of Gondaman now. And the reason why I changed my mind on it is that Siege of Gondaman will fit within my storyline when I get way later in the epic story. I'd forgotten about the about book seven where you travel near Thorns Hall, and I thought that would be a perfect time to play Siege of Gondaman. And since I was planning on following that up with Thievery and Mischief anyway, I decided, all right, we'll just start with Thievery and Mischief then. And hope that I hit level 35 here, which is the biggest risk, is that I don't, since 35 is what opens up Defense of the Prancing Pony. Out of curiosity. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. That's the danger of only doing a skirmish once in a while, as you forget to rank up your soldier. And I am nowhere near a skirmish camp right now. So my biggest risk right now is that my herbalist gets killed. Fortunately, herbalists are probably the, the single soldier you can get away once in a while, especially in tier 1 skirmishes of not fooling leveling, since you don't depend on their damage all that much. So Thievery and Mischief, and probably Defense of the Prancing Pony, I could probably get away with a low-ranked soldier, especially an herbalist. Now, if I were dealing with a warrior, I think a warrior would be useless under such circumstances. Of course, I'm one of those people that thinks a warrior is useless under all circumstances, but that's an entirely different matter. Alright. And, okay, yes, it's... The, that's one of the... The Deathmonger is one of those lieutenants I like to get rid of quickly simply because he goes around summoning the ghosts of friends that get killed. So make sure that he doesn't see any friends get killed so you kill him first. Of course, I mean his friends, not our friends. Oh, let's see. Okay, what did I miss back there? Another wolf. Alright, Thieving Mischief is the first of two skirmishes that are set in... Bree. There's actually a third in Bree land, one that's set in the Barrow Downs, but these are the two that are set within the city of Bree. They're a little bit out of timeline, as you can see, because right now in the game, it's around December, because they talk about the company having arrived couple of months ago in in Rivendell. So it's December in in my actual timeline I'm doing in the game in the epic storyline. Thievery and Mischief says that the Rangers of the North are absent and if you want to be technical that means this will take place when we're away, way out of the area. And up in the, oh, what is the area now? The
Yeah, well, we go down in with the Great Company and all that stuff, because the Rangers of the or North would be absent, of course, because the Great Company is traveling, and they are all gathered by us. Though that's a little bit out of joint also in the matter on how the timeline of the game goes. Because let's face it, the timeline of the game gets a little bit funny. Simply because in, you are told that they... You are sent to gather the great company after you do all the stuff in Mirkwood. You do all the stuff in Mirkwood in February and... This skirmish takes place in early January. And the reason why I say it takes place in early January is simply because that's when Parliament Butterverse says it takes place. He says it's shortly after the New Year. And very rarely do I say something shortly after the New Year when it's February. You know what I mean? It's so I usually think this about being a couple of days after Yule or something like that. Now, you'll think then, wait, wouldn't the Rangers of the North still be there? Because we're st still busy doing quests up in... Well, actually... In January, where would we be in January? Because the the Company of the Ring leaves Rivendell late December. Now we obviously cannot start Volume Two until January because Volume Two starts after the Company arrives in after the company after the company arrives in Lothlorien, because we know they went through Merkwa. I mean, we'd have to really be following close on their heels if we are in Moria at the same time that they are. So I'm assuming that they've already left Moria. Especially since it's pretty early on if there's one point in there where you're starting around f looking for Durin's Bane and all this stuff, and... And obviously Durin's Bane won't be thrown down until after the company leaves Moria. Sans Gandalf, of course. So therefore... I would say that we go to Moria sometime in early January or late February. But we do stuff in... But we do stuff in Eriador that will take up a lot of that time, so therefore that's not a problem. So this is likely, I think we do get sent to Bree at one point during the epic storyline. Now we're going through there, but I decided it was probably not worth the... Well, okay, well, at least answers the question about hitting 35. You do hit the Brie at one point in the storyline there, so. But I thought, no, nah, I don't think we really want to spend that time saying that we had to rescue the city in order to complete it then. I think I'll be more interested in doing the Agmar stuff, because it's always possible that I'll just completely forget about Siege of Gondman when I'm in the middle of the stuff for... And uh, just in case she thinks I don't need healing. <laughs> 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 
she will sometimes heal you when you're fighting an echo of death simply because she sometimes heals you when you're out of combat so if she's in one of her moods to heal you out of combat yes yeah, she will heal you when a when you're fighting an echo of death but of course she's more likely to heal you when you're in combat so therefore I'll tell her yes fight the echo of death of course she doesn't really fight the echo of death but it means she'll treat it as if we're in a combat situation therefore more likely to heal me and the point being of course that the egg that your soldier goes treat treats the situation as being out of combat if the only thing left is an echo of death since they will not fight an echo of death unless you give them explicit orders to do so in fact that's probably one of the few situations where I like to save my horn is so I could use it during that time I'm less likely to use the horn when I'm using an herbalist since if I don't need the healing or anything like that then why bother giving the order of it and let's see. now does that a lot ouch they don't like fighting zealots either simply because the zealot until they get down to one third health it has a dangerous ability so they just don't bother now she'll heal me as long as there's something other than a zealot up now zealots aren't as nasty in my opinion as the echo of death so therefore I could probably get through a zealot without worrying about being healed a little bit But anyway, my main reason why I'm doing Thievery Mischief now rather than waiting until in the until that little time in the epic point where maybe I could squeeze it in is simply because I want to do a skirmish now. And I had to choose something. I'd like to, I'd like to get rid of this crazy banner since that gives them a bonus to their attacks alright slavery mischief on the Bjorning and very well that's slavery mischief on the Bjorning so next time we will do defense of the prancing pony and finish this little pair of skirmishes but I'll see you next time for Pineleaf Plays the Bjorning.